In this video and the next, we point out five inconvenient facts about electric cars that politicians and green activists Take your oil, go to hell. just don't understand. Yeah, so after watching his video, there seems to be a lot of not understanding going on. That was TV host John Stossel. You might have seen him on Fox Business's Stossel or ABC's 2020, or maybe it's from the 19 Emmys that he's won. He's made a name for himself by trying to be the voice of reason and common sense. And while I might have different political opinions than him, I've always valued his usually outspoken libertarian values, and without a doubt, I valued his ability to speak them, especially on platforms like YouTube that have been increasing their censorship of different opinions. Which, by the way, it looks like YouTube has been doing a sort of shadow ban on my channel with my videos that are calling out the Biden administration and the USPS in their shady dealings. I've had too many people to ignore reach out to me and say that they were unsubscribed from my channel or that even when they search my videos or my name by the exact words, they won't show up in YouTube's search function. But we'll go into that another time if you guys are interested. This video isn't going to be about that. This video also isn't going to be criticizing him personally or calling him names. I'm just going to be doing my best to argue against some of the points that he's made in his recent video, Electric Cars, Inconvenient Facts, Part 1, where in my opinion, he gets some critical information wrong and at times, he misses the force for the trees. I don't want him to be banned or canceled or anything like that. What I want is for the correct information to be circulated to the public. And to the extent that I can help circulate that information, well, that's what I'm here for. That's why I'm making these videos. All right, with that intro covered, let's dive right in. His first point is that converting over to electric cars won't make a real change with regards to oil consumption. Take a listen here. That's inconvenient fact one. More electric cars will hardly dent oil use. If all of us bought electric cars, would it make any difference? So the world has 15, 18 million electric vehicles now. It could go to 300 million, maybe 500 million vehicles. I don't think it'll get that many, but that's the aspiration. He hasn't gotten to his main point yet, but I want to correct what was just said real quick. His guest said EVs could go to 300 million or 500 million, but he doesn't expect them to go that high. When we're working with global numbers of cars, it's kind of hard to get a context for what he's saying. So here's some context. He puts 500 million as his unrealistic top end that won't actually be achieved. 500 million cars would be less than China and the US combined. Currently, there are around 1.5 billion cars on the road today, so it seems like the total amount of cars should be their top end for EVs, not a seemingly arbitrary 33% of cars. The bull case for EVs in the long term, which is decades out, is nearly 100% EVs. So why on earth is this guy saying the best case scenario would be 33% EVs? It makes no sense. But let's let him make the rest of his point. Maybe 500 million vehicles? I don't think it'll get that many, but that's the aspiration. That would reduce world oil consumption by about 10%. That's not nothing, but it doesn't end the use of oil for the world. Because most of it's used for what? Flying airplanes, driving buses, big trucks, the mining equipment to get the copper to build the electric cars is all oil fired. And it won't change because those trucks last 40 years. Okay, so I actually think what was said there is wrong with regards to the impact of transitioning to EVs on oil consumption, but this is a bit complicated of a topic, but it's important, so let's try and break it down. And as always, I'll leave my sources in the description. Their argument seems to be that even if we transitioned 500 million vehicles to electric, that would only reduce oil consumption by 10% because oil is used for a bunch of different things like planes and buses and the likes. And we've already talked about why 500 million is an artificially low number, and that should be the long term, which is 1.5 billion or 100% EV saturation. But getting more into his thought process, he said that the reason transitioning to EVs won't reduce oil consumption by much is because... Because most of it's used for what? Flying airplanes, driving buses, big trucks. So let's dig into that. If we look up the global oil consumption, according to the IEA, about half of all the oil is used for road purposes, which means passenger vehicles and diesel trucks and all those things are lumped together. 
In order to break those down by sector, let's look specifically at the US because the EIA or Energy Information Administration gives us great data that we can analyze. So okay, according to this graph, 67% of oil is used by the transportation sector. And within that 67%, the largest subcategory is motor gasoline at 44%. Now, this is important to note because that second largest sector is distillate fuel oil, which in the fine print says distillate fuel oil includes diesel fuel and heating oil. And yeah, we're getting really sweaty in reading the fine print. It's one of those videos. The reason we care is that most trucks, buses, and heavy duty machinery of that nature currently use diesel. So they're not being included in the motor gasoline section. So just at a very high level, when they're saying that EVs won't put a very big dent on oil consumption because other things use so much oil, we can definitively say, actually, motor gasoline, aka passenger vehicles, are the largest single category consumers of oil in the world. So while it's true that there are other oil consumers, we have to start somewhere and the largest consumer is actually a great place to start. He also mentions planes, and while the US flies the most by a huge margin compared to other countries, jet fuel consumption still only makes up about six times less than motor gasoline. So all things considered, while yes, cutting oil consumption via EVs won't reduce our oil usage to zero overnight, it is still the largest single contributor to oil consumption. The frustrating part of his logic to me seems to be, hey look, if we took all of our oil consumption, cars only make up a part of that, so let's not fix cars. But the reality is, we use oil for damn near everything, and there is simply no silver bullet. Some monster that uses all the oil, and if we just turned off that tap, we'd be great. Oil consumption is made up of hundreds of different categories and industries. So yeah, it's complicated. But then let's address the idea that transitioning to EVs won't affect. Driving buses, big trucks. Driving buses and big trucks. I just have to say that this guy is very poorly researched or he's just straight up lying. We're not too far along in the global transition to electric vehicles. And yet despite that, Buses, for example, have been one of the fastest adopters of EV technology. Buses are actually the perfect candidate for EVs because their driving routes are planned and regular and they do lots of starting and stopping and it's mostly slower city driving. All it takes is one Google search to see that electric buses are super common. In fact, just the other day, London unveiled their new fully electric tram buses that'll be hitting the streets in a few months. So this guy is just wrong. Buses are clearly transitioning to electric, but he also mentions heavy duty trucking. And this one takes a bit more forethought, but those two are moving the way of the EV. Tesla is coming out with their electric semi next month. Trucking giant Freightliner has an all electric line. And longtime fans of the channel are going to know that even Nikola Motors has delivered all electric heavy duty trucks to their customers. While electric semis might not be as popular as electric buses yet, all it takes is one look at the economics of something like the Tesla semi to see that they're going to be here in the future. They're just too cost effective to not be used. Companies can't leave that much cash in fuel and maintenance behind. The question isn't if we're going to have electric semis, it's when. So for Stossel's video to say that EVs won't have much of an impact on oil consumption because they don't include buses and heavy duty trucking, I mean, Come on, man. Come on. All right, that's enough debunking his first inconvenient fact. Let's move on to his second. Electric cars are not all that green. One reason is because electricity isn't all that green. Most of America's electricity comes from fossil fuels, natural gas, and coal. Just 12% comes from wind and solar. Now, there totally is truth in what he's saying, which is basically electric cars are only as clean as the electricity that you put into them. If you plug your EV into a coal powered plant, your green, clean electric car is going to be a modern coal engine. I completely agree with this logic. That logic also implies that if you were to change your electricity production to a greener method, all of a sudden the EVs using that electricity become greener, so to speak. So let's look at the US's energy production. Here's the chart from the US EIA, and it looks like what he's saying is true. Only about 12% of our electricity is coming from renewable sources, but that doesn't tell the full story. So let's go get the full story. 
This graph is from the US EIA and it's for planned utility scale electricity generating capacity additions or basically how we're planning to make electricity in the short term future. And just look at this, 70% of our new electricity production is coming from wind and solar and a whopping 81% if you include batteries. That means the majority of power plants are going to be using renewable energies. And if we just look at this graph, that yellow line is solar panel cost over time, which is decreasing incredibly quickly. And the blue bars are solar deployment. And we hit an absolutely critical point in 2020, which was that solar power became a cheaper source of electricity than fossil fuels. Let that sink in for a second. That is a monumental moment for our planet and for humanity because we all know that if companies can make money doing it, they're gonna do it regardless of if it's good for people. And as of 2020, solar became the cheapest way to make electricity. And as we know with economies of scale, the more solar that's deployed, the cheaper it's going to become, which means 2020 was an inflection point and now renewable energies like solar and wind are going to become a larger and larger slice of the total energy production. So while he's not wrong that right now electricity isn't all that green, especially in the US, he's completely missing the writing on the wall. And given that EVs still only make up a few percent of cars on the roads, at least in the US, by the time they become more common, our electricity will be much more renewable. When we're looking at massive shifts in technology, such as with EVs, you have to not only look at the short term, but you also have to look at the long term, and he's totally failing at the latter. But I don't wanna get stuck on this point, let's get to his next inconvenient fact. Ingredients in batteries are mined in places that enslave people and use child labor. An army of children are at the heart of the mining production. Unfortunately, this is completely true. Mining can be a remarkably dirty business and some materials such as especially cobalt, which the majority of the world supplies are in the Democratic Republic of Congo, have serious human rights issues, including using child labor. This is a legitimate issue and something that needs to be fixed. There are no two ways about it. The good news is that batteries don't have to use cobalt and companies like Tesla have already rolled out cobalt free batteries. In fact, in 2022, almost half of all Teslas shipped were cobalt free using their iron phosphate batteries. So I totally agree with Stossel on this point. Mining materials for EVs can have serious environmental and human rights concerns. And that's something that needs to be changed now. That being said, we need to not fool ourselves and act like the harvesting of oil doesn't have its own environmental and human rights perils. The US and other countries have gone to war over oil and hundreds of thousands of lives have been needlessly lost over the pursuit of that black gold. Being so dependent on oil has led the US to do some absolutely atrocious things. And all it takes is one look at the Middle East or at Russia to see that these aren't just some historical scars, they're still having very real ramifications to this day. I don't wanna get into this whole geopolitical debate about resources and conquest. It's just to say that while mining materials does have real world negatives, so does oil. To not acknowledge our status quo with regards to fossil fuels seems to be missing the point. All right, let's get to his last point, which is about CO2 emissions. Volkswagen published an honest study. They point out that the first 60,000 miles or so you're driving an electric vehicle, that electric vehicle will have emitted more carbon dioxide than if you just drove a conventional vehicle in the first place. You have to own it for at least 100,000 miles, and then the electric part wins by some. So it doesn't get you a zero emissions vehicle, it's reduced the emissions then by 20 or 30 percent. All right, so a couple of things here. First, he says that Volkswagen did a study that put EVs versus gas car CO2 break even point was at around 60,000 miles. But then he says right after that, that you have to drive 100,000 miles, which is a pretty massive difference from 60,000 that he just said a second ago, but whatever. Here's the thing. I looked at Volkswagen's study, and while I don't think it's completely wrong, I think they're actually erring pretty heavily on the side of gas cars, and it makes sense. The vast majority of the cars they sell are not electric, and if they come out and say that EVs are so much better, 
They're just giving ammo to their competition, which is Tesla. They're way behind the eight ball, and if they could come out with a study that would show that EVs aren't that great in the real world and they could slow down governments from forcing their implementation, hey, that would be just fantastic. I'm not saying they're necessarily doing that. I'm just saying we always have to look at the sources of studies and see if they have anything to gain from the study going one way or another, because as much as I would like to believe that all these scientists are just holy saints and they only want what's best for the world, the fact is, Money makes the world go around and nobody is immune to that. All I'm saying is that I looked at the study. I don't think Volkswagen is some wholly, totally impartial referee here. They have their own agenda. And in my opinion, their studies calculations show that. If we look at a study done by Reuters on the exact same subject, they conclude that a Tesla Model 3 will break even on CO2 emissions compared to a Toyota Corolla at 13,500 miles using today's US energy production. That's over four times lower mileage than the Volkswagen study. If that same Tesla was being driven in Norway, who uses primarily renewable energies, that break-even point comes down to just 8,400 miles. I'm not telling you which study to use. There are lots of them, and they all have their issues and complexities. What I am saying is that you should go out there and look for yourself and use your own thought process to decide. But he ends it with this. So it doesn't get you a zero emissions vehicle. It's reduced the emissions then by 20 or 30 percent. And this is just frustrating. He said that the break even point for CO2 using the Volkswagen study was 60,000 miles. Then he's saying that they're only reducing CO2 emissions by 20 to 30 percent. That would be putting the lifespan of the car at under 80,000 miles, which just isn't true. Statistically, cars are said to last around 150 to 200,000 miles, which if you drove an EV that far, even using Volkswagen's numbers, which I don't think are right, you're still getting around three times less CO2 emissions in the EV, not 20 to 30% like this guy's saying. Anyways, all this to say, while I really can't appreciate someone trying to combat popular narratives like the green movement, you still have to get your information right. And while I'm not saying he's intentionally lying, I don't think he is, he does seem to get some critical information wrong. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think Stossel is trying to get to the truth and he's correct and I'm wrong? Or do you think he's pushing an agenda like the people he claims to oppose? On that note, I really try and stay away from politics, but covering EVs and renewable energies seems to keep getting me into political waters. But if we can try to keep the comments as civil as possible, I really do wanna try and get to the truth. And if I'm wrong, I wanna know about it. So feel free to tell me that I'm wrong in the comment section. If you appreciate this video where I'm trying to call out information that I believe to be inaccurate, even when that information is coming from a powerful and established source, consider supporting me on Patreon, like all of these wonderful people do. I want to at least try and push back against narratives that I believe aren't spreading the truth, and your support helps me keep doing just that. If you found this video insightful and you want to help spread the message, share it with someone you think would find it useful or fun or whatever it is. I think it's a message worth spreading, which is why I continue to make this type of content. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Peace. Thank you.